Flashback to March 2017, the whole volleyball community was a buzz about a newly formed national team set to compete in the Southeast Asian Games of that year as tryouts were held, but certain players, particularly from the Ateneo de Manila University, were allegedly not invited. An apology was then issued, and special tryouts were held to accommodate the aforementioned athletes. Flashback to 2015, with a newly formed organization in Lerong Volleyball Sao Pilipinas Incorporated. LVPI, taking the reins from the Philippine Volleyball Federation, PVF, as the volleyball authority in the country, the future looked bright, as for the first time in recent history, both the men's and women's teams were being sent to the Singapore Sea Games as representation of the sport's resurgence. As with any newly formed roster, the composition was mired in controversy especially with the men's team, which was composed of predominantly of young players. Flashback to 2014, with the power struggle between the aforementioned LVPI and PVF, the latter formed the infamous Amahan and Bagwas squads as the women's and men's national teams, respectively. Backed by then-sponsor PLDT, the rosters boasted of the sum of the country's best talents from both divisions with the likes of Alyssa Valdez, Marcus Pejo, Ara Galang, Tayton Panton, Ran Ran Abdilla and Mark Alfafara to name a few. Both teams never saw the light of day outside the country as the PVF eventually lost its accreditation leading to the team's eventual disbandment. And the theme went on as the previous years are revisited. Fast forward to present time, 2018, and once again the volley community is abuzz with the formation of yet again a new national team with a familiar scenario in which local favorites did not make the cut. With the volleyball scene at an all time high and local following, it is quite inevitable for varying opinions on who should have been included in the lineup given the wide pool of talents, especially in the women's division. Coupled with a sudden change in coaching staff, the new roster is once again under scrutiny, given the process the team as a whole was structured from the beginning. Another new beginning. Without taking anything from the players and coaches of the new women's national team, the composition is relatively deserving of the spots for the roster. While expected UNs who have performed tremendously well in the local leagues like Mila Pablo, Micah Ortiz, and Tayton Panton were not afforded a slot in the team, the new lineup is still pretty much capable of representing the country. Middles, A.B. Morano is the best fit amongst the middles who made the final cut. With exceptional timing and good lateral movement, Murano is expected to perform in the position well offensively and defensively despite the lack of height for a middle blocker internationally. Her agility and aggressiveness with her net play more than justifies her inclusion and assignment as the team captain. Her DLSU successor Majoid Baron would add much needed support as the second middle as she has proven to have the power and timing of AB, though much work can still be done for her agility in the net. Baron's aggressive floaters will also be of much benefit on the service line. Lastly, Mika Reyes would provide the height should the need arise, especially against foreign teams with bigger size. Left wing, Alyssa Valdez's inclusion as left wing hitter is of no question as she continues to prove that she is one of the best open hitters in the local scene. Perhaps working more on her bulk and power is something the coaching staff must consider to ensure that she can carry over her local performance to the international scene. Dindon Santiago Manabat and Cesc Malino likewise have proven themselves much capable of being offensive threats from the left, and their decent size will be of much benefit in blocking against slides and opposite attacks from foreign counterparts. It would be beneficial as well if Santiago Manabat develops mastery of passing and if Malina becomes a significant threat with the pipe in order for both athletes to really excel in the position. 
Although Cha Cruz is not much of a power hitter as compared to the aforementioned left hitters, she would serve a special position as the service and defense specialist for the team. If in scenarios in which she will serve in for a middle, her floor defense is of much benefit in zone 5, and with her background as a former setter, she is still capable of setting up a decent play should the setter get the first contact. Right wing, though much of her collegiate season has been utilized hitting from the middle, Jaja Santiago is undeniably more fit for the opposite position. Despite her height and power, which could be considered an automatic criteria for the middle, Santiago has much work to be done with lateral motion which is also a crucial component for middle hitters. With her vertical reach and power, she is better off racking up points from the right wing and right back row as the main offensive option for the team. Likewise, Kim Dai is also a shoe in for the opposite position as evidenced by her consistency in scoring and blocking from the right. With Kim Fajardo calling the plays, Kim Dai would be beneficial in running faster or creative plays should the need arise. Setters, the selection of Fajardo and Gia Murado is not to be questioned as both have proven and continued to prove that they are top notch setters in the country. Both setters are of shoe in for the national team as both are equal in consistency with Fajardo showing mastery in working the middles and Murado displaying her skill in making the wings work for her. Not much can be argued really about the selection of the two athletes. A reserve setter in Ray Demaculangan would be also beneficial as she has the consistency and creativity as the aforementioned setters as well as the height, which would be important in blocking. Libero, currently hailed as one of Southeast Asia's finest, Dawn McIndilly is undeniably a good choice for the main libero position. With her agility and speed to pop up digs and impossible saves, her presence on the floor is highly beneficial for the team on transition defense. On the other hand, her counterpart Denise Lazaro has proven to be highly consistent from the receiving end of services making her inclusion as part of the regular roster and not just of reserve undeniably essential. With Lazaro setting up the passing formation and McIndilly guarding on transition, their combined specialized efforts will ensure the first step in letting the setters run the play for the team. A shift in view. Given the fact that the talent pool in the women's division is deep, player selection will always be put on debate as not all favored athletes will be included. Perhaps a good way of viewing the matter is that given the yet again short preparation time for the next international tournament, the coaching staff would best select players who they have already established a good working relationship for a more seamless adaptation of a new system. Rather than put into scrutiny the individual players, hand-picked or not, the focus should be put on the system as a whole and how it can be further developed for the improvement of the sport. Yet again, the 2018 roster is proving to be another promising one as it has been almost every year when a new lineup is formed. More than bringing back pride to the country internationally in the tournaments immediately at hand, the bigger challenge for the national team is to prove itself not as yet another band-aid solution in the attempt to have a continuous program. How the 2018 team will prove itself different from its predecessors in past Asian Sea Games would be the more important matter that should be put under the lens. With the sport currently a major source of livelihood for many athletes, the players are no longer the ones getting the short end of the stick, but rather volleyball and its development as a whole should the loop continues. The country has much individual talent deserving of a spot in the team, but for as long as vested interests continue to rear their head in the Philippine volleyball system, the level of the sport will continue to fall short in justifying its current local popularity.